Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth here for Hurricane Pro and Hurricane HD with your first video blog of the 2013, not quite hurricane season, but this is sort of a primer, a first broadcast to get you started, get you familiar with some of the things we're going to be talking about as we are now within a month of the start of the hurricane season in the Atlantic and only about two weeks away from the start of the eastern Pacific hurricane season. So I thought I would start off with one of the forecasts from one of the more reliable sources out there, and that is Colorado State University. I believe they've been doing this on the order of three decades now. And while they've had some hit and miss type years, overall the last several years, their seasonal forecasts, at least for the amount of activity forecast to occur in the Atlantic Basin, has been pretty good. And their forecast methods are improving so i thought that i would take a look at their april 10th update they're going to have another one on june the third and i will go over that once we get to that point in time that's a monday monday june third but right now as of their april update they're calling for 18 named storms that's a lot of course 18 named storms then nine hurricanes forming from those 18 named storms and then this is the more important number here to me, uh, four major hurricanes. That's your category three, four, or five. And that is very significant because major hurricanes are responsible historically for at least 80% of hurricane damage. And they are the ones that can cause the greater losses of life. Now, we don't want to emphasize categories too much because we know that even a category one hurricane and tropical storms for that matter, can have pretty significant impacts as we saw last year with Hurricane Isaac in Louisiana and Mississippi, and then of course Hurricane slash Superstorm Sandy along the northeast part of the United States all the way down to the mid-Atlantic states. For example, what happened along the North Carolina Outer Banks where Sandy was several hundred miles offshore, you still had significant surge impacts wave impacts along the Outer Banks from Sandy. So we won't be talking as much about categories as we will about impacts this year. One of the reasons behind the Colorado State forecast of a very active season are the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Atlantic, which are very much on the warm side here between Africa and the Caribbean and even through the Caribbean. And then the lack of warm sea surface temperatures here in the tropical Pacific, the lack of an El Nino. Right now, conditions in the tropical Pacific are basically neutral to a little bit cooler than neutral. We're not really in an, a La Nina situation where it's remarkably colder than normal, but more of a neutral pattern where it's neither an El Nino nor a La Nina. But here in the Atlantic Basin, water temperatures are running significantly above normal in this main development region here between Africa and the Lesser Antilles, south of about 20 degrees of latitude here. And that's going to add more moisture to the atmosphere, more energy. The precipitable water values in this area are already running at least normal, whereas the last several years have been below normal. It's not as dry out there. It's going to be more conducive for development, it looks like, in what we call the deep tropics here between Africa and the Caribbean Sea. In fact, if we look at tropical cyclone heat potential uh, for this time of year, this is valid yesterday, the very end of April, this is the amount of actual energy that's in the ocean, the tropical cyclone heat potential, not just a measurement of how much, uh, how warm the water is, but how deep that warm layer extends into the ocean. And this is what it was looking like as of yesterday. And you can see a fair amount of this TCHP, this fuel, in the Caribbean Sea around the middle to just starting to creep into the upper part of the TCHP chart. At the bottom of the chart you would have lower amounts of energy and that amount of energy starts to increase the higher up the chart you go. We will see it reach the peak here, hopefully not until September, uh, but here's what's interesting. This is yesterday. This is what it looked like a year ago. You see, that's quite a comparison. Look at yesterday again. And so this is 2013, April 30th. And here it is at this same time last year. So quite a increase 
and tropical cyclone heat potential, especially here in the Northwest Caribbean Sea and then in a small portion of the Southeast Gulf of Mexico. We'll look at that one more time. Here it is this year. This is what it looked like last year. So as we approach the start of the hurricane season on June the 1st, this will start to really matter because there's a little bit extra energy and in some cases a lot of extra energy available for storms and hurricanes to tap into. Right now looking at a hemispheric shot, uh, you see North America, pretty good complex of thunderstorms heading towards Florida. Uh, and then here's South America, the west coast of Africa, here is Mexico, and the southeast Pacific right here. Now the Pacific hurricane season, the eastern Pacific, begins on May the 15th, a couple of weeks from now. And we will be watching very closely any clusters of showers and thunderstorms that form in this region that have potential to develop and impact either Central America or the Pacific uh, coast of Mexico. Right now, nothing out there to be concerned about, and certainly nothing in the Atlantic Basin here from Africa all the way over through the Caribbean. There is this complex of storms moving through the Southeast Gulf, non-tropical in nature. It's bringing a lot of rainfall for South Florida, though, where things have been rather wet this year so far. But this is a look at one of the satellite pictures we'll be using. There's many more tools available when we analyze what's going on out in the tropics, but as of now, the 1st of May, no issues. And typically this time of year, we won't expect anything. This is a climatology chart. Right here we are at the very beginning of May, and you can see it's you know almost zero. It's not quite. Over the 100 years or so of history, there's been some activity at the first part of May. It's not until we get to about May the 10th, right about in here, that things begin to show up enough to display them on a map, and we'll show you that in just a second here. Of course, September 10th is the peak, with a secondary peak uh, near the middle part of October and a much more minor uh, tertiary peak, or third peak, in November. So once we get to the 10th of May, and this 10-day time frame, May 10th through the 20th, you do start to see a little bit of an increase in the frequency of tropical storms and hurricanes. In fact, they are almost equal for both basins. So I don't know why June 1st is the start for the Atlantic hurricane season, but two weeks earlier we start the Pacific hurricane season because you can clearly see from May 10th through the 20th, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight origin points uh, over the last hundred years or so. And in the Atlantic basin, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's equal. Uh, but that's not for me to decide. It's just an interesting observation that once we get through and pass the 10th of May, really the door is open for development. And remember what I showed you, that this area of the Caribbean Sea is running above normal sea surface temperature wise, as is a good deal of the tropical Atlantic out here, where we don't have any development points during this time frame of May. But we will also be, of course, watching the Eastern Pacific in case something tries to develop out there. Typically, the tracks of anything that develops in this region, uh, if there's a strong enough area of high pressure sitting up over the Eastern Pacific like this, hopefully any development will head on out to sea, uh, even to the northwest a little bit towards colder water. Sometimes, though, you drop a trough of low pressure in, and uh, that tends to steer these systems up towards Mexico and even in the Baja of California area. We'll see what happens. People in that area, um, they know the history, they know what can go on. Once in a while, a tropical storm or a hurricane will affect the southwest coast of Mexico or portions of Central America. And that'll be our focal point once we get to about the 15th of May. And um, then we'll be doing this every day from that point on. So I'll talk about that just for a moment. We have this video blog today for Hurricane Pro and HD. I'll have another one on May the 10th because that is, as I showed you, the start of when we can, at least over history, expect maybe a chance of development. So I figure in another 10 days, let's take a look at things. And then five days after that, on the 15th of May, it'll be time to start these video blogs for you to view every single day throughout the hurricane season. There'll be a day or two here or there where there won't be one as things will be quiet enough to warrant a day off every once in a while. But I think things will be busy enough 
that you can count on a well advised hurricane video blog uh, for most of the hurricane season ahead and when things get really busy we can really go into in-depth analysis on tracks intensities model forecast you name it and we'll actually be using a lot of the tools that you already have at your disposal in this wonderful app of hurricane pro and hurricane hd for ipad of course and we'll uh really take advantage of those powerful tools and show you what you need to know for the season, uh, hopefully in a way that you can understand it. That's the bottom line, is to not talk over your head and to also be spot on talking about the topics at hand and not too sensational about it, no hype or anything like that. If the hurricanes come, we're going to discuss them. If we get lucky and it's a no-hit year, hey, that would be wonderful, right? Uh, but we're not going to make up anything if there's nothing out there. And I think people who have been watching this video blog over the last couple of years already know that. So that's good stuff. All right. Well, have yourselves a good rest of the uh, week ahead here, the rest of the week. And then again on May the 10th, like I said, I'll be back with another video blog. And we'll see what's going on at that point in time. And then on May 15th, you can expect these every day. All right. Again, I am Mark Sutter. HurricaneTrack.com is my site. Very proud to be partnering with Kitty Code, the developer of Hurricane Pro and Hurricane HD. I'm honored to be back to provide you with this information again this year. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you again on the 10th.